EXTEND WARM WELCOME TO ALL OUR MEMBERS AND VIEWERS ONLINE TO THE ARIMA PASTORAL REGION AS WE CELEBRATE HOLY COMMUNION THIS MORNING. ALTHOUGH OUR CHURCH DOORS ARE CLOSED, WE ARE OPEN TO THE PRESENCE OF GOD'S HOLY SPIRIT IN WORSHIP TODAY. Let us worship God. Praise the Lord our God. Worship before his throne. Holy is he. As we continue the prayer of approach, let us worship God as we come together in prayer. Let us pray. God of mercy in this hour, in this sacred place, have mercy on us. God of light, shine into our hearts with searching radiance. God of power, be our refuge and our strength that we may ably manage the hours of life within your will and purpose for us. God of love, let love flow through us enabling us to meet others in the same spirit of love as does the Lord Jesus Christ, God of life, who lives within us, making us aware of the eternal dimensions of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn, as we continue, is...
shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. We continue with the prayer of confession. And as we come to God this morning, let us join in that prayer. Loving Father, who looks with mercy upon us, all your servants, we enter this, your house of worship and prayer. And although our lives have shown failure, even deliberate transgressions, such as even when we are challenged to go out in service, we have closed our ears and we have turned away. When confronted with temptations, we have easily given in. In our daily lives, we have been irritable and resentful and rude. Above all, O oh God, we have presumed to be more righteous than we are. This morning we come seeking your forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, we pray, and consecrate us anew for thy service, that we may go forth in the assurance of your love and the confidence of your power through, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture readings are taken from first reading at Psalm chapter 99 and that is followed by the gospel reading at Matthew chapter 22 verses 15 to 22. Psalm 99 God the Supreme King The Lord is King and the people tremble he sits on his throne above the winged creatures, and the earth shakes. The Lord is mighty in Zion. He is supreme over all the nations. Everyone will praise his great and majestic name. Holy is he. Mighty King, you love what is right. You have established justice in Israel. You have brought righteousness and fairness. Praise the Lord our God, worship before his throne. He is king. Jesus and Aaron were his priests, and Samuel was one who prayed to him. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They obeyed the laws and commands that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered your people. You show them that you are a God who forgives, even though you punish them for their sins. Praise the Lord our God and worship at his sacred hill. The Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Matthew chapter 22 verses 15 to 22 The question about paying taxes The Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. Then they sent to him some of their disciples and some members of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what others think because you pay no attention to anyone's status. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus, however, was aware of their evil plan. And so he said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin. And he asked them, Whose face and names are these? 
The empress, they answered. So Jesus said to them, Well then, pay to the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Our next hymn is... Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner is to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to This morning's message is entitled, Giving Love and Service to God. From the scriptures taken from Matthew Gospel chapter 22, the Pharisees had set up a plan to trap Jesus with questions. They sent their people and even some members of the Herod's party. And they raised the question to Jesus, Teacher, we know you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what others think. Because you pay no attention to anyone's status. Tell us, is it against the law to pay taxes to the Roman Emperor or not? And Jesus knew their plan, saying to them, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin where you are paying the taxes, which they did. Then he asked them, whose name and face is on that coin? And they replied, the emperor's. Well then, what belongs to the emperor? Pay the emperor. And what belongs to God? Pay God. My friends, this morning, you know, we can think we're so smart that we have a better plan than what God has for us. Many times over, right, there are flawed reasons which only leads us to phony, phony redemption. And what we are saying here this morning is that in Jesus' day, it happened. And you want to believe this? That it still happens today. 
the Pharisees tried to trap Jesus. And they were looking for an easy way out. They were looking for a real easy way to rid themselves of this, trouble, this troubling teacher, this rabbi, who only spoke about God on personal terms. And they asked him a question that would put the law of Caesar in tension with the law of God. But what they did not understand, and you know something many of us still don't today, is that God wants commitment rather than compromise. God is out to save our souls, not pick our pockets or squabble about petty religion. Christ calls us to give to God what God really deserves. You see, friends, what do you think God really deserves? God is worthy of our worship. Give to God the things that are God's and God, what is due to him. The divine merits, our loyalty, our praise, our celebration of life and God's creation, all these. God is not concerned with the legalism of our religious practice or whether we gave 10% of our paycheck to the last decimal point. God desires our complete commitment, body, mind, and soul. That is so because in God's word, the Gospels remind us that discipleship is not a halfway proposition. The apostles left everything. Those who came to follow him when Jesus said, come and follow me. They left everything and followed him. Jesus Christ is Lord over all of life. The cross and the empty tomb are real and are worthy of a faith response that is equally genuine. We give, live, serve, and pray because an incredibly gracious gift has been given to us. Anything we do is but a response to what God has done. Secondly, God is not only worthy of our worship, God is uplifted in our very service. Christians are persons who have answered the call to serve God. Those who desire to follow Christ must proclaim God's love by their living, giving, serving, and praying. No matter how tough the journey gets, there is almost certainly someone whose struggle is even greater. Take, for example, this illustration. A man's wife falls asleep into the dark abyss of Alzheimer's syndrome. There is this blank expression, this association of thought and purposeless movement characterize her plight. Lovingly, he cares for her, that is the husband, bathes her, brushes her hair as she falls deeper and deeper away from reality itself. And when she becomes bedridden, he cares for her round the clock. His own life is absorbed by her care, and he has little time for himself. No greater witness to Christian marriage exists than the complete sacrifice of one's life 
for the love of another. By his service, by that man's service, love is uplifted and God is honored. That's why we are talking about giving love and service to God. That really matters. Thirdly, God is honored in our relationships. You cannot sincerely say you're worshiping God and be unkind to God's creation. That will never work. There is no integrity in being a cross wearer if you cannot be a cross bearer. Life and relationships are indeed very tough. Marriage, parenting, and career all have their challenges. Christian, Christian persons persevere throughout life, journey, and strive to remain faithful, loving, and kind in their relationships. This story, there was a successful elder who seemed to have it all. He was respected by his peers, honored for his service, and promoted for his successes. It was all a hollow reality, for his marriage was in shambles and his temper would lash out at those closest to him. That is, even his family had to bear most of it. Confronted one day by his minister, he was asked three questions. For example, how do you how do your prayer how do your peers rate you? How do you rate yourself? And how does God measure your success? Now he knew that he was successful in the eyes of his peers. And he also knew that his career helped him put his self-assessment on top. He had not truly thought about God and God's criteria for success, and his minister answered for him. And this is the words of the minister to that person. If you cannot love and serve those closest to you and be worthy of their respect, you do not love God. For God requires justice, kindness, and humility in all our relationships. God offers abundant living when we realize that success is not measured by the world's standard, but by God's standard. It is by giving love and service to God that really matters. So my friends, let us practice during this September uh, month of stewardship what really matters to God and give to him what he deserves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue, friends, we go to the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Christ we come into your presence this morning, seeking to lay all that we are, and have into your hands that our bodies and souls may become fair temples in which your Holy Spirit may continue to dwell 
This morning, O Lord, breathe into us a desire for our wills to become your will, that we may look upon this world and see it as you see it. Fill us with a Christ-like manner that through our feeble hearts, although we feel that pulse and beat, we want, O oh Lord, the pulse of your eternal love. This morning, O oh Lord, let our eternal souls possess something of your eternal joy and blessing. For we come to you at this time of so much trial, tribulation, ailment, and sickness. For we seek your grace and your blessing. We seek your protection and your help. And we come to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the Lord's Supper. St. Paul reminds us, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heavy repentance and true faith turn unto you? Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Father God, we pray your blessing on the elements of bread and wine, symbols of our Lord's body and blood. And as we prepare ourselves to share at your table, we come together this day, O Lord, to offer and present unto you, Lord, ourselves and our souls and our bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you. Humbly beseeching you, O Lord, that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and your heavenly benediction. And although we are not worthy because of our many sins to offer to you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you, Lord, to accept this as our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory and praise, world without end. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us the family prayer to recite together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
According to the holy example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in remembrance of him we do this, who on the same night on which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, as we now give thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for us. After the same manner also, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which was shed for the remission of our sins. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ shed his blood for us and be thankful. The peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us all. O Lamb of God, who take us away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who take us away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who take us away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. As we prepare to share in the element of bread, a reminder of our Lord's body, we join in the hymn. participate in the body of the Lord the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for us preserve us unto everlasting life take and eat this in remembrance that Christ gave his life for us and feed on him by faith in our hearts and be thankful our next hymn as we share in the element of wine is of 
As we prepare to share in the element of wine, a reminder of our Lord's blood, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of our sins, preserve us unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us, and be thankful. Together.
Let us continue in prayer. Enable us to know beyond a doubt that in you we live and move and have our being. Then may we so live before others in daily practice and devotion that life-changing ex uh, examples of peace and joy and patience and fortitude and humility and love may be available to you for your work in building your kingdom among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we join in the choral benediction. And now the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.